Well, we'll begin with news we're following at this time. The Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Anire, has confirmed that there are now two cases of the coronavirus infection in Nigeria. The minister says the newly confirmed case is a contact of the index case and not an importation into the country. But there is no cause for alarm as the situation is under control. It says the patient who tested positive on March the 8th has been in isolation in the last two weeks and is now under quarantine. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has also posted a message on its social media handle announcing the confirmation of the new case in Ogo State. The index case of a coronavirus in Nigeria flew into the country from Milan, which has the highest record of a disease in Europe on February the 24th. He fell sick on the third day of his stay in the country and tested positive for the disease two days after. He is currently receiving treatment at the Infectious Disease Hospital in Yaba, Lagos. We'll definitely keep tabs on that one for you. But let's move to politics now and bring you an update on the crisis rocking the leadership of the All Progressives Congress, the APC. Well, there are strong indications that President Muhammad Buhari may have begun extensive consultations to decide on the APC's National Executive Council meeting scheduled for March the 17th next week. Well, a party member disclosed that constitutional issues raised around the purported meeting might have made the president to seek clarification from relevant stakeholders. The acting national secretary of the party, Mr. Victor Gadam, had last week issued a notice of meeting of the second highest organ of the APC for March the 17th to discuss raging issues affecting the party, including the suspension of the national chairman, Mr. Adams Shamale, by an Abuja High Court. Although Mr. Shamale had dismissed the court ruling as ineffectual, waiving a counter-court ruling from the Federal High Court sitting in Kano, which asked all parties in the crisis to revert to status quo antebellum, Gedam and the National Vice Chairman Northeast, Mr. Mustafa Saliu, had insisted that the suspension of the National Chairman subsists. But three other national officers, the National Publicity Secretary, Mr. Larry Isaunilu, National Legal Advisor, Mr. Babatunde Ogala, and the National Secretary, Mr. Waziri Bulama, in a statement at the weekend, declared the proposed meeting unconstitutional on the grounds that it was not called in line with the provisions of the party's constitution. So, the controversy surrounding the constitutionality of the scheduled neck meeting of the APC seems to be reaching a fevered pitch. So, let's make a sense of it all as Mr. Ibrahim Modibo and Mr. Washington Osifo, both members of the APC, join us live from our Abuja studio. Mr. Washington uh, Osifo, I believe, is uh, 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 well in the camp of Comrade Adams Ashomali. So, let me begin from uh, Mr. Modibo. Who would we say you are loyal to first? Well, I'm loyal to the party. Right. So let's chronicle what has happened so far. Well, so we had the court rulings, the one in the FCT, the Kano Federal High Court, and the police swinging into action. We understand that the judge of the Kano Federal High Court was also reported to the NJC. And afterwards, there was a talk about an emergency meeting. So where do we stand right now regarding that emergency meeting? Is it going on as scheduled or there are still deliberations as to whether it should go on or not? Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Let us properly situate and contextualize the issue at stake. Now, the issue is this party is drifting. The party is drifting towards maximum dictatorship. And we want to bring back the party to the people. We strongly believe that as it is today, we've lost several points in terms of political aggregation and in terms of political you know, control of situation in Nigeria as it is today. Therefore, the need for this party to come to, to come back to the people cannot be overemphasized. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the issue in contention, we are there looking for a solution to this problem. We believe that this is party with the highest number of Democrats in Sub-Saharan Africa. We also believe that this is a party that is governed by reason. This is a party that produced one of the best presidential materials in sub-Saharan Africa in the point of Mr. Muhammad Buhari or President Muhammad Buhari. Therefore, for this party now to start buckling on the full weight of dictatorship, mm. where we see the party being managed by one single person who dictates, who takes party uh, meetings to his house rather than coming to the secretariat, and also who tries 
to look at issues, especially from the viewpoint of selfish interest, where we see us losing about eight states in the last elections by virtue of lack of competent leadership qualities. So we, strongly, we strongly believe there's a need for right. this party to come back to the people. That okay. is why today this meeting has been called. As of last night, I can assure you that as of last night, almost the whole, I mean, not more than three, four, five governors that were left out, all of them are with this uh, present leadership coming for the next meeting. And also the letters have also been going out. As of last night, I've been right. very comfortable uh, Mr. that Bo things were on the right footing. All right. Let's just a moment. Um, let, let's bring in Mr. Osifo. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on some of the issues you have raised, but let's get uh, Mr. Osifo to respond to some issues you have raised. Now, Mr. Osifo, Mr. Modibo has talked about uh, a dictatorship. He has, he has alluded or at least made reference to what he believes is some form of dictatorship in the APC coming from Comrade Adams or Shomale. And I'd like you to respond to that. What do you think about it? Well, first, let me say that it is... Re um, with very deep sense of uh, pains that uh, I'm sitting here today to discuss not just the issue of uh, my party, the All Progressives Congress, but the party that is the ruling party in Nigeria. Therefore, you cannot talk about uh, APC or the crisis within APC without talking about, about Nigeria. Um, first, I also want to say that, uh, let me correct your impression. Uh, my loyalty is not dual. My loyalty is single, and my loyalty is, the, is to the All Progressives Congress. So I don't think it is correct to say this, uh, Washington is loyal to, to, the, to the national chairman. Now, having said that, I want to say, emphatically so too, that problems can be solved by coming together in a fraternal spirit to seek ways and means of solving them, rather than through unnecessary worries, worries and carnage which has the potency of debasing us as a people and even dehumanizing us. What I see today, um, I've listened to my, my, my brother here, a very big one, the man I have tremendous respect for. But I'm sad. I'm also sick about some of the comments. You cannot say, for instance, that you recognize the fact that the All Progressive Congress is one of the biggest in terms of number in the sub-Sahara and that presented a candidate that is responsible and should be responsive to the needs of the people in the person of President Muhammad Buhari, who won election unanimously, you know, uh, you know, overwhelmingly, so to speak. And at the end of the day, if you love this party and you love this man that you are talking about, the president of the country, you should also know that he cannot make reasonable pro progress in, his, uh, in his, uh, what he has vowed to, to do for the people if he does not sit tight and have peace in his party. So, I Mr. listened to you, uh, my brother, when you were making a, when you a were making a, 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 a building a foundation for, the, for this. And you said the, pre the president is having a sleepless night. The question is, why should the president, as the leader of the party, have a sleepless night? I don't okay. think that is correct. All right, Mr. Osifo, just a moment. Party. I just want you to also respond to one of the things Mr. Modibo raised. And, you know, dailies are reporting that a lot of governors are behind Comrade Oshomali, I mean, they have mentioned governors of states like Oshun, Kano, Katsina, Kogi, Kwara, Lagos, even some uh, South, South leaders and some other names, major names in your party. But Mr. Modibo mentioned earlier on that, in fact, some of those governors have moved to the other side. So how much of a backing does Comrade Oshomali have in the APC? Well, I answer, I answer it this way. The greatest, um, the greatest enemy to propaganda is time. Um, it is convenient for any of us to come to, to use your platform to tell the world what is true or what is untrue. I am confident and, uh, uh, of one thing that is flying everywhere, and I'm, I'm following it hook, line, and sinker, that there will be a meeting, purportedly called neck meeting, that is slated for, for the 17th, which is Tuesday next week. But I want to tell you, this party is a party that is guided by its constitution. And that constitution is a subsidiary legislation. It is just not a, another piece of paper. And I have followed through. And I'm sure you, as a member of the fourth estate of the realm, without, without diving, uh, descending into the arena, you have also followed through what the constitution says uh, in, uh, in raising uh, in, uh, what, you must, the, 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 what must be fulfilled, the condition that must be fulfilled before calling neck meeting. I have seen it. The man who purportedly called the meeting does not fall into that category. Right. So that is the, question, the reason why I'm asking. Why should the president, knowing the constitution of his, of his party, be having sleepless nights 
over uh, uh, what he should, what shouldn't really bother him. Right. I think what should bother the president now is that why should say a set of persons who do not mean well for this party, based on their selfish agenda for 2023, that is still three or four, three and a half years away from now, when the president had barely spent, uh, 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 celebrated his first year in office, to say thank you to Nigeria, to reinforce his affirmation, you know, of the victory given to him by Nigeria, and take it to the next level, which is, of course, was the, with the, what the, was, uh, the catching point f f through which he came in this second tenure. You see, he should be thinking about that. That's what should give him sleepless night, not right. what, what okay. some persons are saying they want to... All right, just a moment, Mr. Osifo, just a moment then. Now, let me tell you something. Just let a moment, you. just a moment, just a moment. You, you talked about your party's constitution, and I'd like to bring in Mr. Modibo here. And I was looking through your party's constitution. You know, and talked about uh, provisions for filing an action in court of law against a party or perhaps the party's officers. And you particularly mentioned that you have to exhaust uh, all the avenues for redress before this is done. Now, we have seen the cases at court, at the FCTI court, uh, the Kano Federal High Court. And the question is, being an intra-party issue, do you think it should have been escalated to the court at this point? Was there any need, since it seemed as though, as though the, you know, the redress avenues in the party had not been exhausted? You see, things in this party, as I've earlier stated, has been drifting. Things were moving from, you know, uh, you, if you look at the, in both content and character, looking at the leadership profile of this party, and going back to the memory lane of the constitutional provisions of this party, I've been a national director of publicity of this party, well, since APP, APP days, and I have been fully in grip with the constitutional provision of this party. The fundamental questions to ask are, where did the chairman register his own name at a, as, a, as, a, as a party person. It was at the grassroots. He didn't register at the national level. Therefore, by provision of the party's constitution, it is at the ward level where you registered. That is where your power is. If the ward level has suspended you, you start suspended. Therefore, the fundamental issue is, has the chairman, Mr. Oshomole, opened a fertile ground for conversation. I'll tell you no. That's why I said the party is drifting. Things are moving from the sublime to the ridiculous, where mediocrity and iniquity seems to rule. Right. And therefore, we believe that the party should go back to the people. We do not believe in a pocket dictator, a maximum dictator, trying to put this party under the full weight of his own pockets. Okay, Mr. 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 Modibo, let's get Mr. Uh, like Salu Mustafa. Let's get Mr. Osifo's closing thoughts, just so we can round up on this conversation. Pardon me for buttoning. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Osifo, on a final note, uh, do you see an end in sight to this, now that it seems as though the president wants to wade in? Do you, th do you think that this will end anytime soon? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very optimistic. I'm a very optimistic person. And uh, if it doesn't end soon, I think uh, the president should be aware that it borders on his integrity and also the integrity of the party. But I think what we should bother ourselves instead of talking about 2023, the Kebbi State Governor, unfortunately, is supposed to be the, the chairman of the Progressive Forum. Um, there's nothing progressive about the ideology of fighting for 2023 when it is not here. Also, the Ekiti the, the State Governor. I want to also remind them that if it continues like this, self implosion is imminent. And I want to say that this country, we promised Nigerians to take them to the next level. The APC, that was what we promised Nigerians. And I'm still aware that at this time, we didn't envisage when we were making that promises that the oil price will not dive. Right. What should bother us now at this time is this global, global threat to oil. And every day I read the numbers, and the numbers are going down. All right, Mr. The COVID-19 is there, threatening, threatening uh, human, human I existence. Mean, it, it's good you've raised some of these issues. And I think that they should remember that about a few years ago... Uh, Mr. Osifo, I mean, it's good you've raised some of these issues, and I think a lot of Nigerians will be looking to not just your party, but the government in power to see how things are handled. But I'd like to thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing your time with us. We've been speaking with Mr. Ibrahim uh, Modibo and Mr. Washington Osifo, both members of the APC. Thank you very much, and I wish you the very best. Well... After the legal storm uh, and the Imo governorship election, we'll be taking a look at that in a moment as we'll also be speaking with our correspondent at the National Assembly as we take a look at that public hearing on the social media bill. Stay with us.
Hey, welcome back to the program. As the social media bill passed second reading last week at the Senate, the Senate is today taking a step farther to hold a public hearing on the much contentious bill in Abuja, as Nigeria's federal capital territory. The public hearing will involve participation of key stakeholders in the cyberspace, senior journalists and top government officials in order to set an agenda for a robust dialogue on the social media bill. So let's head over to the National Assembly, where our correspondent Terry Kumi is standing by at the venue of a public hearing of a social media bill to bring us up to speed on the latest happenings regarding the public hearing. Good afternoon, Terry. Now, this has been something that has got a lot of Nigerians talking so much anticipation to this day. So walk us through what are the expectations and what are the major issues that you think will be touched on uh, during the public hearing today? Well, hello, Coyote. I um, couldn't hear you clearly there, but I think you're asking uh, about the major issues that could be discussed there. I think for many, uh, it has to do with the shutting down of the Internet whenever the police deems fit, uh, whenever there's a case that the police thinks should be investigated, and then they could ask the NCC or the Internet provider to shut down that. I think that's going to get some clarification here today. And also another thing is who determines what's uh, falsehood in this case. It's going to be quite uh, an interesting discussion, I must tell you. Uh, the public hearing proper is just about to begin. A few minutes ago, the president of the Senate declared it open. In his statement, he was very emphatic and said, uh, keep an open mind, told everyone to keep an open mind, regardless of whatever position you might think you already have, keep an open mind because this, every argument must have different sides to it. And regardless, you must be open to hearing the other ideas of uh, uh, the persons here. Right. Now, before this, uh, I saw a lot of social media users asking uh, others to be at this public hearing. And there was a trend actually saying, go for that public hearing, ensure that your voice is heard. So in terms of attendance, from what you have seen so far, how, how is the attendance? Oh, yeah, it's very well attended. Trust me, it's very well attended. The hall is filled to capacity. We have um, quite a number of activists here. We know that uh, Mr. Omoyele Shawaray is here. We have uh, the uh, Policy and Legal Advocacy Center here as well. Quite a lot of people are here for this public hearing, and everyone will get an opportunity to speak on this bill. And I must also say we have a, a, a quite an interesting number of uh, cameramen here uh, beyond the number that's normally here at the time. So yes, this is very much well attended. Well, thank you very much, Terry Komi. This is definitely shaping up to be something big. I will stay with you uh, for more updates. We've been speaking with our correspondent at the National Assembly, the venue of that public hearing for the social media bill. Terry Komi, thank you so much. Well, let's bring you some of our stories in brief. A rights group, the Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, says it received a letter from the federal government requesting the full list of former governors and ministers that have received or are receiving double pay and life pensions. According to Serap, the request follows last year's judgment by Justice Oluremi Oguntoimbo, ordering the government to challenge the legality of state's pension laws and recover public funds collected by former governors and ministers. Sarah Father explains that the request will enhance and ensure compliance with the court's judgment as it hopes that the judgment will be implemented promptly for the sake of integrity, accountability and proper management of public resources by state governors. And while women across the world celebrate, dignitaries from across the country also gathered in the nation's capital, Abuja, to celebrate with the Vice President, Professor Yemio Shimbajo, as he marked his 63rd birthday. Former military head of state, General Yakubu Kowan, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Songwulu, and his counterpart from Akwai Bomimana Ludum joined the Oshimbajas for a Thanksgiving service. The former head of state extols the virtues of vice president and commended him for his service to the nation. The vice president on his part urged and encouraged Nigerians to let God fight their battles for them at all times. More stories. Former governor of Imo State has finally broken his silence over his removal from office by the Supreme Court judgment. Honorable Emeka Ejiwa in a statement described the judgment as a miscarriage of justice and political fraud. Well, according to him, 
Whatever may be the personal injury I suffer as a result of the miscarriage of justice, my main concern in this whole tragic episode is not about me. It has always been about the implications this judgment could have for future of our democracy and the right of the electorates to have their votes count. If institutions that are critical to the entrenchment of rule of law could thwart the wishes of the people in a cynical manner, where lies the future of our democracy? And elsewhere, the Ward Congress of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Ekiti State has ended in crisis. A, a group in the party is accusing the immediate past governor of the state, uh, that's Ayo Fayashi, and his loyalists of hijacking the process and compromising the electoral officers from Abuja by concocting fake results at a hotel in the state capital. The group besieged the purported location, attacking vehicles said to belong to the former governor and his allies before intervention by security officials. But Fayashi's spokesman insists the complainants are politically naive, as he also accuses them of jumping the gun by proceeding with the Congress just hours before the arrival of the designated electoral officers from Abuja. The leader of the electoral team, Deputy Governor of Taraba State, Harun Omanu, could not be reached for comment before leaving the state. Those materials, the resort, they don't go to those places they were meant to go. That is the issue. Those are the issues that generated the uh, uh, problem. They went to hidden places which we've just discovered now. They wrote all the resort which they supposed to go and collect on the feed according to their directive. They wrote all the resorts here. You don't go into contests like this if you don't have your brain intact, if you are not in charge, if you are not in control. In this game, Ayo Fayoshe is their master. He's, he's a master of the game. And he, he just showed to them yesterday that he's a master of that game. They will keep complaining, they will keep shouting. Well, let's talk South South security. The governor of Delta State, Ifan Yokoa, has explained the move by the South South governors for a regional security outfit. On our Sunday politics show, Senator Okowa explains that the initiative is to address the security threats affecting the region while also contributing to fixing insecurity in the country. Most of the governors in the South South uh, region, we've been working individually uh, as states trying to cope the various uh, security challenges that we have. But we thought that it would be best if, as a region, uh, we came together to collaborate with ourselves, realizing that we actually do share boundary. And uh, especially when you're talking about the issue of uh, Hesman farmers' clashes, uh, they come through uh, similar routes, and from one state, they can progress to another. And even when you come to the issue of kidnapping, which has been a, a, a very troubling uh, uh, challenge at the moment, uh, you find people operating probably at those states, and before you know, they're in Delta, and in the next few days, they're operating uh, also in uh, River State, and it goes that way. So we thought that if we're able to start a regional security outfit, we'll be able to co-monitor and co-share information, uh, working along with the security agencies, and uh, put the initial processes that we had as individual states uh, to be managed uh, as a regional outfit in such a manner that it will become more productive. Well, you can't separate politics from security. Well, that's it on Lunchtime Politics. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, you can join the conversation on our social media platforms. That's at Channel CV and at CTV Politics. You can also watch this on YouTube. Our channel is at Channels Television. Please subscribe so you can get access to our amazing content. I'm Kairi Okikyolu, and I'll see you soon.